Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. The Mass for Inspiration is being brought to you in part by the Seach Law Offices, 53 West Foothills Drive and Drums, phone 570-359-3283, or visit us online at theseachlawoffices.com. Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home, 229 West 12th Street, Hazleton, 570-454-8341, and online at moranfuneralhome.com. By Dr. and Mrs. Victor F. Greco and the LaSant family. Entrance Antiphon. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sun, the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all the living beings so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he has brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prisons, who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel 
according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, a story by Father Floor McCarthy. It's a good story. It's a story about Lent. Once a king was walking through the streets of his capital city when he came upon a beggar who immediately asked him for money. The king didn't give him any money. Instead, he invited him to visit him in his palace. The beggar took up the king's offer. On the appointed day, he made his way to the royal palace and was duly ushered into the king's presence. However, as he came into the king's presence, he became acutely conscious of his raggedy clothes and felt ashamed of them. They were an eloquent symbol of the wretchedness of his life. The king, an exceptionally kind man, received him warmly, took pity on him, and among other things, gave him a new suit of clothes. However, a few days later, the beggar was back, begging on the streets, dressed in his old raggedy clothes. Why did he give up the new suit? Why? Because he knew that to wear it would mean that would he, he would have to live a new life. It would mean giving up the life of a beggar. This he was not prepared to do. It wasn't that the new life did not appeal to him, it did. It was just that he knew that a change of life would be slow, painful, and uncertain. In other words, he was too steeped in his old ways to change. My dear friends, if we want a new garment, we must cast aside the old one. Wearing the wearing of the new garment will involve a new way of living. My dear friends, now we're entering the season of Lent. Lent involves two things. First, we have to reform our lives. And second, we have to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. To believe that Jesus came to save us is our response to Lent. But to save us from what? Our sins, our sins. Some time ago, the author Killian MacDonald made a keen observation about conversion. It came in response to this question. Why are some evangelical preachers so successful in effecting conversions? For one thing, says MacDonald, they follow our Lord's instruction in today's gospel. They get people to admit that they are sinners, and they help people to turn to Jesus for salvation. My dear friends, the Billy Graham Crusades were an excellent example of this. This is the problem today. Many people do not recognize Christ because they do not recognize themselves as sinners. If I'm not a sinner, I have no need for Christ. McDonald concludes saying, no man will celebrate the mystery of Christ in joy if he does not first recognize in sorrow that he is a sinner. Today's gospel invitation touches on both of those important points. It invites us to admit we are sinners and to turn to Jesus for salvation. This brings us to a concluding observation. Today's gospel invitation makes a perfect introduction to Lent. Down through the centuries, Christians have found the season of Lent to be a time 
of special grace, especially for reforming one's life. If we are looking for a special way to celebrate Lent this year, we could do no better than to use it as an opportunity to rediscover the power and peace of the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of penance, going to confession. My dear friends, throughout all the Mondays of Lent, there will be a priest in every confessional, hearing confessions, your confession, every Monday from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. Please take advantage of this marvelous opportunity to get closer to Christ. For in this sacrament, we do what Jesus invites us to do in today's gospel. We acknowledge our sinfulness and accept him as our personal savior. It's an invitation to seek forgiveness for our sins and to begin a new life, a life that's centered in Jesus. Let us close with the prayer from Father Link. Lord, the season of Lent is a season of invitation. It's a season when you invite us to open our hearts to the special grace that you traditionally give at this time. It's a season when you invite us to look closely at our lives, to see what needs to be changed or what needs to be improved upon. Give us the light to see ourselves as you see us. Above all, however, give us the courage to change ourselves as you yourself would want to change us. Amen. Let us prayerfully recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us recognize our total dependence on God to provide for our needs and present our petitions to him, confident in his love for us. For our Holy Father and all who serve the church, as she proclaims the kingdom of God, that they may continue to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit in all they do, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may be always mindful of the needs of their people and serve them with integrity and love. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer the hardships of weather, that we may respond with compassion and generosity to their needs. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may find comfort in the presence of Jesus in our acts of charity. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they find eternal rest in the warm embrace of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. This Sunday's Mass is being offered for the health and blessings of Andrew Marquez. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God Almighty, hear the prayers of your people. We ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Amen. 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Donna. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh soul, are you weary in trouble? No light in the darkness you see There's a light for a look at the Savior In life more abundant and free Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things Strangely dim 
in the light of his glory and grace through death into life everlasting he passed and we follow him there over us in no more hath dominion for more than conquerors we Let us pray. Eyes upon Jesus. Renew, renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us now bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God. The Mass for Inspiration is being brought to you in part by the Siege Law Offices. 53 West Foothills Drive and Drums, phone 570-359-3283, or visit us online at theseachlawoffices.com. Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home, 229 West 12th Street, Hazleton, 570-454-8341, and online at moranfuneralhome.com. By Dr. and Mrs. Victor F. Greco, and the LaSant Family, 503-837-1000.